Hello viewers, Eric the Car Guy here. Uh, behind me I have a 1993 Acura Integra which is owned by my brother which uh, has shown up in many videos. But it's a good, good car to use because there's plenty of these things still floating around out there and most of the Acura stuff transfers over to Honda anyway. Anywho, my brother has a problem with the left rear caliper sticking, hanging up and it needs to be replaced. So we're gonna replace that in this video and go through the steps that I go through whenever I replace a caliper on a vehicle and hopefully uh, this information will be helpful to you and if nothing else, entertaining to watch. Let's get started. Step one, raise the vehicle and support it on jack stands. I'm gonna do both back wheels at the same time. There's not a whole lot of weight in the back of this vehicle so I'm just gonna lift up on the middle and then put my jack stands underneath the sides. And since this hook supports the weight of the vehicle. I'm just going to use it as my jacking point. It's okay, I've done this a bunch of times. And I'm going to put them under the pinch welds on both sides. I'm now going to remove the rear wheel. And we want to make sure the parking brake is not on. Right now it is. These parts are never coming off if the parking brake is applied. Ew. All right, well, as you can see, we have uh, kind of gone metal to metal on this side. Um, and the other side actually wasn't that bad at all. And then uh, previously I had removed this caliper and tried to turn it in. I'll, I'll do it on this side also, but you could definitely see that this caliper is damaged. Uh, something else to note here is where the parking brake cable attaches. See how it's got that bend, that curve to it? Well, that's because this is also frozen under the parking brake assembly, and this will make your parking brake not work so good. So we're going to address this because we have to remove it in order to replace the caliper anyway. But should you run into this and you're doing a brake job, soak it with some penetrating oil and work it back and forth uh, so that this can fully release over here. And if you do that, and it still doesn't fully release, it still doesn't come all the way out, then you probably have a bad caliper because this, this whole assembly is part of the caliper itself. Many, many times you have asked me, Eric, what tools are you using? Well, here they are. I got my anti-seize, I got my silicone paste, I got a 12 millimeter deep, 12 millimeter swivel, I got a 14 millimeter swivel, I got an impact driver, I got a 10 millimeter uh, and a quarter inch, I've got brake clean and PB blaster, um, I've got a small pry bar, I've got a pair of side cutters, uh, and an impact, three it's impact. I've also got my trusty pliers here, which I'm going to use right now. Because we're replacing a caliper, and we don't want all the brake fluid to leak out, well, you can just do that, and that will actually help keep all your brake fluid from leaking out while you take the caliper off. So that way it won't be as difficult to bleed the brakes when we're all done because we will need to bleed them. If you're lucky enough to actually have one of these shields because I've seen so many of these shields that just gone missing, they didn't feel they were necessary, whatever. Um, all you gotta do is remove this 10 millimeter right here on the back side. 10 millimeter right here. Once you have that out, just leave this one attached and you can just bend the whole thing up just like that and then you've got access to everything and you can see a little more clearly what I was talking about about this uh, cable and that's what we're going to address right now because we actually need to hey let go we actually need to remove this pin in order to replace the caliper okay and you can just start to like tap it with a hammer And then I'll just take a pair of channel locks. Sorry, I keep hitting you there. I'll just take a pair of channel locks and just start working it back and forth. And this is what you can do if you're just doing a brake job and you see this. And some of these may be more frozen than others. A little more penetrating oil. And just keep working it until it's free. 
This is probably gonna be one of the hardest parts of this job. All right. When you get it to the point where you can loosen it up by hand, you're just about there. Now there's this pin that goes through underneath that you can just sort of see right here. You just grab that with a pair of channel locks and pull that guy out. It's hooked on one side. And it's like really difficult to show you until I get the pin off what it's doing. There you go. All right, you can see how that pin is hooked. So when you go to pull this pin out, you gotta spread this out so that it comes past the hook. But that's the pin. Put that someplace where you'll find it. Now I just take a small pry bar and just go up under here and start working. And you, take, you can take your channel locks once again and just sort of grab the top of this pin and try to rotate it. But my guess is it's probably gonna, not gonna wanna do that. I may fight with this for a little while. But once it starts, you're home free. There we go. See how it's starting to move? When it moves independently like that, you're in. Finally, he's out of there. Now we're free. So our cable is now disconnected from the caliper. Like I said, hardest part. Given that this was such an issue, I'm just gonna take this over here to the wire wheel, clean it up a little bit. All right, now it's time to remove the actual caliper itself. Um, Normally these guys are 12 millimeter, but if the caliper's been replaced, it can be 13 or 14. In this case, they are 12. And since I'm, I know I'm gonna be replacing this caliper, I'm gonna take this 14 off now, but I'm gonna put a pan underneath. I'm not trying to impress you or nothing, but this is just quicker. Now you should replace these washers that are on here, so hopefully the new caliper comes with them. But if the new caliper does not come with new washers, it's okay to reuse them. Some people might disagree with that. And they're probably right, but I've done this a couple of times and I have had to reuse the washers in the past and I've been okay. In fact, some washers that I've used actually make it more difficult. Um, and I've actually seen new washers leak. A little pry bar. Just have one last thing to disconnect and this guy is pretty much out of here. Now some of you may be tempted to take the cable and everything out of this assembly right here but if you'll notice there's two 12 millimeters right here on the caliper itself that all you have to do is take those out and you won't have to mess with anything with this cable. Okay, now that you've managed to get this far, you need these two 14s right here to come off. And for that, I'm just gonna employ my 3 8 impact. But before I do, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that these need to get started. So even when you're using an impact, when stuff is this rusted up,
You just want to try and get it started first. Now we have to send this back for a core, but it's very possible that the new caliper will not come with this um, assembly here. So we need to get this out. Mm -hmm. And to get these out, oftentimes what I just do is take a pocket screwdriver and just push one side back, and that pops them out. It also may not come with these. These are important. Once again, pocket screwdriver. You may not need them, the new caliper may come with them, but if it doesn't, you're prepared. A lot of times you need to do this with a core. You don't need to run these down tight, you just pretty much need to get it so that it's one piece, because this is, this is pretty much what you're gonna get. But I'm gonna take this and just let it drain in my pan. A lot of you out there have posted in response to my uh, rotor screw removal video because I actually did a video on this and I had some trouble. But most of you are like, I just drill them out. I just, uh, or, or hitting, and hitting two hammers together is, is going to cause one to shatter. Well, okay, it says wear safety glasses right on here. And I am wearing my safety glasses. Uh, but I just want you just to try and consider this before you drill. Um, I'm not saying drilling's not gonna work, but come on. Uh, even with as rusty as this is, I'm gonna bet that I can do this just with my two hammer method. I'm not, I'm not even gonna grab my impact driver. Regular screwdriver. Okay, take that. I say that took less time than it took to drill. No impact driver, nothing, two hammers. Done. Every other brake video I've done, I've showed you this. This is to get the Cosmoline rust inhibitor off the surface of the rotor before you install it. This is just brake clean I'm using. All right, do you need to put the screws back on? No. Does it help? Yes. I'm just gonna take a little bit of anti-seize and put it just a little bit on that screw head before I install it. Because that way, next time I go to do this, it'll happen easy. There we go, now we just need caliper. All right, we have our new caliper. It did come with new crush washers. Happy to see that. It also came with this bracket, which we're not gonna need. I'm gonna take that off. This one's a good one, so it came with new shims. Came with both the upper and lower shims too. So this, all you need to do is put it in on one side and then push up on the other and then pop it in. And that gets you that back. It's a little sloppy. Sometimes what I've done is I've bent these a little bit, but it doesn't matter because this will push on the brake pads and keep it locked in pretty good. I usually find that these are lubricated with grease. 
Ah, look at that. This one's lubricated with silicone, just like I show you. This is actually quite a good reman. And now for these upper and lower ones, you just take them and slip them into place. Sort of push down. Same on the other side. Sort of fit it into the groove. Push it down in. There you go. Get your 14s with your washers. These are OE pads and they come with this little tube of molly grease, molybidium, and you just put a little bit on the outside of there, underneath the shim. That's it. Just put the shim on over the top of that and you're good. And on these, the indicator goes down, it's on the bottom, like so. Take a little bit of anti-seize, put on all the corners of the pads. The same on the other side. Just where stuff slides and you're good. Top and bottom. Inner pad goes in, outer pad goes in. They're happy there. The new caliper they slide in nice. Let's take our parking brake cable. Line it up. It needs to fit on there like this so that it can uh, go in. The threads are started. I'm just going to run them down. Tiny bit of anti-seize on these bolts. Tiny bit. Once again, just a little bit anti-seize on there. Yay! Lastly, we need to reinstall our pin for the parking brake. Bring this around, set it up. Once again, just a wee bit of anti-seize on the pin. And then keep track of where your pin hole is. That'll be important when you go insert the locking pin. And you just find the hole and push it through. Once it's locked on, it's locked on. There you go. You don't need to kill this. That should be good. Now I'm bringing my shield down. Once again, a little bit of anti-seize on this bolt too. We can take our vice grips off. Now we need to bleed some brakes. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just hit the pedal a couple of times before I get started. Just hit the brake pedal. Just that way I can sort of seat the pads in start getting the air out. I'm not, you notice I'm not pushing it all the way to the floor. It's not good for a master cylinder to do that. That should do it. It's real important not to run the master dry. So before you even get started, top that bad boy up. Make sure you don't run out. Okay, since I'm a one man operation, Bleeder. I'm going to use my trusty brake fluid bleeder that you've seen in all my disc brake videos and hook that up. Here now, I can just 
open that up, start pumping away. I can actually see the fluid coming out. And since the bottom of the line is submerged in the fluid, it actually allows the air to go out and does not allow fluid to go back in. You gotta be careful with this because it'll look like there's a lot of air coming out, but sometimes that's just a loose bleeder. Sometimes it's just coming in around the outside there. Here's the tricky part. Maybe I got it in time. Let's see how the pedal feels. It's actually feeling pretty good. I think a few more pumps and we got it. Okay, well, there you go. Rear caliper installation a la Eric the Car Guy's style. Um, there are different methods that you can use to bleed these out. A buddy really helps. Um, the pedal pumper, which is available at my website, uh, that works pretty good, plus pressure bleeders and, oh, I'm sure vacuum bleeders also, all valid ways, and also gravity bleedings. Sometimes what I used to do at the dealer when I worked and I was doing a job like this is, I'd actually crack the bleeders loose on this uh, and just let the fluid bleed through while I went and changed the oil or did other things on the vehicle. And then I'd jump back on it and there'd be very little bleeding to do. And gravity bleeding just means you crack the bleeder open and let the stuff drip out. Or you let the air naturally come out via gravity. Uh, e either way is good. Um, as long as you get the job done and the job meaning getting the air out of the system. I like my little soda bottle thing here because it basically shows me how much air is actually coming out. Uh, sort of. Keep in mind that air can sneak in around the outside of that bleeder, particularly on new calipers. So what you might perceive to be air may not be air. And that'll probably give you the most fits. The rust and then also bleeding the brakes are probably going to be the most difficult part of this, but it's pretty straightforward. And if you, you crimp that line off, that's going to save you a ton of time and you won't bleed the master cylinder dry while you're swapping something out. Gives you plenty of time to do whatever it is you need to do. I can't really think of much else that I can offer on this one, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, I am Eric the Car Guy. You can always visit me at ericthecarguy.com or follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And those links are, of course, at my website. And then I close with uh, be safe, have fun, and stay dirty. Enjoy. <laughs>